welcome, welcome. It has just been an amazing week, and you are here listening to Bras, Panties, and Sports. This is Spitface. You're here with the First Lady of Sports Talk, the one and only Cheryl Smith, the Shimmy Shake Girls. We want you to check out the music this week on Shout Out. We are featuring On Planet Zoo, where they find their shining star. Or have to go to Pluto or something, get the cold feel of the mute button. It's time for the old school giggle. Let's see what we got. This season on the Lips TV Network, you can forget Judy, Joe, and Mill. Because here comes the new judge in town, Judge Rennell. Whatever happened to Judge Edo? Did he move in with Kato Kalen or something? John Scott is the court reporter. I just want you all to know that I'm wearing Star Wars underwear. And Tracy Sterling as the bailiff. Ew, spider! Oh, it's just my soft eyelash. <laughs> oh, Lord, please help her. Oh, God! Okay, ladies, what seems to be the problem? I am the great Diana Ross. And this... It's a very mediocre shock of con. What? You better watch your mouth or I'll breach out and touch you upside down. Anyway, we both entered a classic soul diva contest to settle once and for all. Who's the all-time diva? It was a tie. Can you believe that? It is quite shocking, because I should have won. Listen here. There ain't no mountain high enough that'll keep me from Ladies, taking off my big-ass platform to the border. Side your eye, got your every woman right Come here. on now, ladies, please, please, order, order. Wait a minute. Let's settle this in a true diva fashion. Yeah, you're tough. Yes, I agree. You two should have a sing-off. I'll be a very, very fair judge. A sing-off? No, no, no. We're having a weave off. Now that we got our giggle going on, First Lady, we're ready. What you saying? Each week, we try to figure out what is going on in the sports world. Not the plays of the week, more like the players of the week. Are they trying to tell us something? So we ask, what you saying? Fly, little birdie, fly. Time keeps on slipping into the future. Time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future. So I want to fly like an eagle to the sea. Fly like an eagle, let the spirit carry me. I want to fly, fly right into the future. The little birdie known as Tony Romo is flying right to the TV studio instead of the sunset as a Super Bowl winning Dallas Cowboy quarterback. Hmm. Did Jerry Jones jerk Tony around so he would not play for the Texans or Denver? Is Dak and Zeke stumble into 2017 with the ghost of Romo lingering over a happy valley? Should Tony Romo be in the NFL Hall of Fame? Did Phil Sims get the shaft? By the way, anybody see the show with Skip Bayless and what's his name? Roger Staubach, Don Meredith, Troy Aiken, and the Steve Miller Band are asking, what you saying? <laughs> Oh, my gosh. No, Jerry Jones, yes, he definitely did jerk his son around. You know, that's his son, Tony Romo. Now, my gosh, if your own dad would do that to you, who knows who's going to jerk you around. But, yes, <laughs> Jerry Jones jerked Tony Romo around because the Texans really wanted Tony Romo. But I'm quite sure the Cowboys was asking for too high of a draft pick for the, for them to release uh, trade Tony Romo to the Texans and they should have just outright released him when they did but you know they didn't do it so maybe the Texans really didn't want it because eventually they did release him but 
the Texans, I believe, had signed somebody already, even though it wasn't the, the quarterback that they wanted. So, yeah, Jerry was just asking too much ransom for Tony Romo. So Tony decided he was going to go into the telephone. I mean, excuse me, the telephone booth, the, telephone booth, the television booth. <laughs> but you know what? He went, into the, he went on TV and he took Phil Sims' job. Yes, Phil Sims, who had been with CBS for 20-something years, and Phil's son, Chris, claims that his father was blindsided by the booze. He said he wasn't even informed that Tony Romo would be taking his spot as the lead analyst with Jim Nance. Now, come on. CBS said that he was aware of the situation. Really? How could CBS say that when I don't even think Tony Romo was aware that he was going to take the job? I mean, this was like a last second thing. Maybe it was on the back burner all the time, but I mean, they really wasn't aware. I mean, Tony Romo really wanted to play again. So I guess when things didn't pan out, that's when he decided to go to CBS. So I don't know how they could have told Phil. Phil so yeah, Phil definitely got the shaft from CBS. Well, let's get back to the Cowboys. Now that Tony Romo is gone, this is now going to be the, the Dak, Zeke, and Des Bryant show. And, you know, if they cannot have a similar season like they did this past season, I don't think it's going to be because of the ghost of Tony Romo lingering over Happy Valley. Tony Romo, what ghost? The only ghost to linger over Happy Valley is the ghost of Tony Romo that he could never win a game to get the team into the playoff, or he could never successfully win a playoff game. I mean, he played in six playoff games and only won two, two games. Two out of six, please. Ghost of Tony Romo, that's a ghost of Tony Romo past. And to be honest with you, Spitface, I don't even think he would make it into the Hall of Fame. Definitely not on the first ballot because he is not a first ballot Hall of Fame. Heck, if if T.O. is not a first ballot Hall of Fame, I know Tony Romo isn't a first ballot (laughs) Hall of Fame. Now he may make it. He may make it the second or the third time because you know he is very well liked by the media. So this is now becoming such a uh, a popularity contest. They really don't care what you do on the field, as we know from T.O. But uh, so I think he will eventually make it into the Hall of Fame, but it won't be first ballot. And as far as uh, he is well liked by the media, and one media person in particular that likes him is Skip Bellis. Yes, Skip Bayless. He would definitely vote for Tony Romo for the Hall of Fame on the first ballot. And Skip show, yeah, what's his name? That's Shannon Sharp. And let me just tell you about this show, because, you know, I was a big Skip Bayless fan when he was on first take. But their new, no, their new show with Shannon Sharp, man, there's nothing unique about that show. At least our show is unique, Spitface. But they just copycat. <laughs> they copycat. They just copycat off the first plate, first take. I mean, you know, Skip left for the money, but his show is so blasé. It is nothing spectacular about the show. I mean, if you look at the show, even the studio where they're um, having the show, it's so dry looking. It just looks B-rated. I mean, it's not like first take. The only good thing about that show is the song that Little Wings, Little Wings sings. That's about it. <laughs> anyway. Skip Bayless, man, you're going to become running back to ESPN. All right, Spitface, what do you think about this whole Tony Romo? Was he shafted by his father? Uh, 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 first lady, uh, 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 my man, uh, uh, Tony, I, I, I'm kind of go- I, I am surprised that Jerry Jones, I really am surprised that he jerked him around like that because, you know, uh, consider, uh, you know, it is Tony Romo. And that was his boy that, uh, you know, he couldn't have made just a, 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 an okay deal. I mean, you know, but also that points to how much Jerry Jones had an inflated value of Tony Romo. <laughs> that apparently other people in the league did not have. Because, you know, all last season, you know, the, the little underlying story was how, you know, Jerry Jones was kind of uh, secretly uh, hoping that Dak would kind of stumble 
and he'd be able to put Tony back in, you know, b- back in as a starter. And that didn't happen. So, you know, yeah, I, I, that tells you uh, that Tony, that Jerry Jones always had an inflated value for Tony Romo. Now, uh, I will say this, that if Dak and Zeke stumble next year, and, and, and specifically, if, if, if Dak has the sophomore blues, you know, that doesn't quite, you know, work the magic because now they got a year of tape on him and they got a year of tape on how the team works with him and those defenses start, you know, adjusting more for his game, you know, it starts being a little challenging. And there will be calls from Cowboy Nation because you know Cowboy Nation how they are. There will be calls in Cowboy Nation saying, how could they have let Tony Romo go? I can see the whining already. Oh, God, they should have kept Tony Romo. They should have paid him to be a backup. Ah, da, da. Oh, God. It, it's, uh, uh, it, the drama is already set in motion. So if, there's, if, if they don't come out gangbusters, and then I'm going to tell you something else, First Lady. If they do come out game busters, they do make the playoffs. They do make the NFC championship, but they don't win at all. Mm-hmm. They'll go, they're, they're there, Tony Romo. It's going to be some Cowboys who going to be, and I ain't talking about the players. It's going to be some Cowboys and fan, Cowboy Nation who going to be whining that they should have kept Tony Romo. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, Tony Romo, it, it, is one of those quarterbacks who's who's stat heavy, you know, because he got he he done broke a couple of Troy Aikman record records. So uh, you know, hey, he's stat heavy, and it, you. But when it comes to quarterbacks, unless you Dan Marino, if you don't have a a a a a, a good playoff winning record for your team. It's hard to put you in the Hall of Fame. Now, it, no way Tony Romo would be a, 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 a first round. But uh, but first lady, I, I really think that he will not go to the Hall of Fame. At all? I, I don't think that he will make it. I don't think he will go to. I, I mean, I, I really think that, that that he will not go to the Hall of Fame. And part of that is, is that. One, he has to wait to get in. Yeah, he has so, to you know, wait. Some, ta- some, 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 time, some time will pass before he becomes eligible. And mm-hmm. the more that that time passes, the more people will be able to look at that record and go, what did he do uh, to, to go, no, nah, he, he ain't no Hall of Fame quarterback. <laughs> you know, I, I uh, you know, that, you know how sometimes it. time works for you where people get a little more oh, well, blah, blah, blah. I, I don't think time will work for him. I think the but the further he get away from the game, the less his quality as a quarterback and the more his shortcomings will be, you know, highlighted. Well, you know, that depends on how uh, Dak does, too, because then Dak will definitely have them forget about Tony Romo. But I think when the time comes <laughs> When his time comes up, they'll go back and look at his record. And you're absolutely right. He is stat heavy when it comes to regular season stats. But th- that playoff record, and, and then you remember there was times what he did in the fourth quarter that lost him the chance to even get into the playoff. I mean, I <laughs> well, was at least three games, three seasons yeah. when that happened. Yeah, so. I, I, I'm like, I, I, I don't see him get getting in. Uh, it, it'll be. Uh, I, now I put it like this: like you said, time later on, you know. But uh, I, I, I don't really see him. And Phil, Phil, see, I feel for you, Phil. I feel for you, Phil. But Phil, you know, television is a cutthroat in the industry. Just like when you was playing in the NFL, you know, at, at any moment, someone could step in, take your job. So, hey, Phil, you had a great run. But I'm going to tell you something, Phil. Don't get on that set with Skip Bayless. So don't, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Stay away from that set. <laughs> Stay away from that set. Go, you know, hook up with some, you know, somebody else. Uh, I kind of think Phil, uh, uh, somebody want Phil. 
So, uh, hey, you know, you, you take your analytical skills someplace, but but, but don't, don't mess around with Skip Bayless. That, that. Yeah, and, 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 you know, I put it like this. That show's so bad, I forgot Shannon Sharp's name. <laughs> 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 that might, I might not have really wanted to associate. Like, 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 nah, I can't even associate Shannon with this crap, you know, because it, it is bad, bad, bad. Uh, I, I, I had to force myself to watch an entire, you know, uh, episode so that I could, like, you know, be able to, like, really say it, what, I, you know, like, if it was, if I thought, it didn't even look like it had a chance of getting good. <laughs> you know, that's how bad that show is. You did better than me, because I didn't watch the entire episode of Form My uh, Opinion. It, it was hard, <laughs> personally. It was hard, because it, 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 you know how, like, you start hoping it's going to get better? <laughs> and it just don't, you know. I was like, God. But uh, uh, I, I, right, I will say this. I will say this. Uh, Fox Sports. Uh, 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 y'all can put us on in that time slot. I, 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 I'm willing to go ahead and put on the makeup. <laughs> I, I'm because y'all need help. Y'all need help quick. All right. Okay. Don't call to the comeback. I've been here for years, putting rocking my peers and putting suckers in fear, making the tears rain down like a monsoon. Listen to the bass go boom. Explosion, overpowering over the competition. I'm towering, wrecking shops when I drop these lyrics that'll make you call the cops. Don't you dare stare, you better move. Don't ever compare me to the rest that all get sliced and diced. Competition paying the price. I'm gonna knock you out. Huh. Mama said knock you out. Huh. We are not talking about Michelle Tafoya, Pam Oliver, or Hannah Storm. We're talking about the knockout punch landed on Tremaine Brock's career by the San Francisco 49ers who let him go after a what? Domestic violence arrest. You are a 28-year corner, old cornerback who has played in every game for the last two years and played for the same team for seven years. Sounds like somebody was about to get paid, but illegal use of hands gets a penalty every time. 59 tackles over two years usually gets you off the hook for most things, but not domestic violence. No, no, no. Are the 49ers a little sensitive, or is this another loud and rude awakening that the NFL ain't going to take it no more. Does the Ray Rice rule not say we don't need no stinking video? Get arrested for domestic violence, and we are just kicking you to the cave. Tina Turner, Xena, Warrior Princess, and Catwoman are asking what you say. First Lady, uh, I... Really, I don't think this is a case of the 49ers uh, uh, being overly sensitive, but I do think that uh, the 49ers are just an example that teams are more and more inclined to say, too hot, it's too hot, baby. <laughs> if you're going to put your hands on, on your spouse, woman, whatever, we got to let you go. Because if you got, you know, if you have played every game for two years, made some tackles, had a couple of interceptions, you know, that will usually kind of assure that, you you know, you're going to stick around, you know. Now, you know, better players, all that moves get made, but, you know, you pretty, you know, like, hey, you might even be looking for a little more cashola. But now you rear back and think you're going to put your, uh, get some illegal hand usage. And there's going to be an arrest involved. That, nah, they ain't even worried about the video. You just, uh, nope, we, we, we just need to walk away from it. So uh, NFL players and, and, and athletes, male, female, can see, you know, don't, don't forget. Don't forget domestic violence. It don't have to be a man, you know, illegally using hands on a woman. It could be a woman illegally using hands on a man. It can be a, 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 a woman, woman, you know, I mean, you know, hey, you know, uh, uh, LGBT rights, <laughs> you know, equal opportunity, illegal hand users in domestic violence. You know, you can be in big trouble. <laughs> so, hey, wake up call, y'all. This is, a, 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 look at that boy in the draft. His little stock that went way down. Now, somebody going to grab him. You know, we, we, we don't even need to pretend that somebody ain't going to grab that boy. Out of college, be the 
and, and, and say and say, look, you know, well, you know, because once he dropped far enough, everybody take a gamble. <laughs> Knowing he got the talent, you, you drop far enough in the draft, and they go, "Look, really, you got first round talent. I'm gonna snatch you up. We 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 got a we we we'll, we'll hire you a babysitter. <laughs> Just don't go to Dallas, first lady. What you say? <laughs> yeah, Lord Joe Mixon, he he is dropping faster than an elevator. But anyway, I mean, the 49ers are definitely not being a little bit too sensitive. I mean, this is the way it is now in the NFL because we all knew that the NFL had not taken domestic violence seriously and it's a zero tolerance right now zero tolerance because I mean when the 49ers new GM John Lynch and their new coach Kyle Shanahan took over they had said in their press conference they're not going to tolerate off-field incidents so they put their whole team on notice that if they have some off-field incident, it's not going to be tolerated, and they can lose their job. And that's just what happened to this um, Tremaine Brock. He lost his job. And now maybe they didn't want to pay him that money either. <laughs> I mean, he was in the last year of his contract, so they just saw that as a casualty. Well, we don't need to pay him. He's been here for this amount of years. Is he going to get any better? So the fact that he had that domestic violence and the thing is about it, it's really big because the 49ers didn't even wait until <laughs> everything was reviewed. They got rid of him the next day of the incident. I mean, what happened to being presumed guilty? But I guess that police report has said enough because it indicated that the female had visible injuries. So his hand did hit something, and that was probably her face. And so that's the reason why they definitely say, oh, no, we can't tolerate this. We can't tolerate this. has got to go. So, you know, I give props to the NFL and to teams because they are finally taking domestic violence very seriously. And the only thing I can say to these players, you better start getting a punching bag in your home. Because if you can't resist hitting somebody, you better go to that punching bag. Because if you put your hands on a woman or anybody to be the exact, you will definitely lose your career. And I don't think it's going to be worth it. Let's just ask Ray Rice because he still cannot find a job at this point in time. And he probably will never find a job. So you guys better get a punching bag because it is uh, uh, he, not uh, Ray correct. got a job. Yeah, Ray got a job. Oh, really? What, what was Ray doing? Well, not in the NFL. Oh. But uh, I, I, I think he got a, uh, like, a, 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 a coaching uh, oh. a, a, of a high school team, uh, some oh. kind of uh, coach. Well, well hey, you're going to compare that to working in the N- NFL? It, he wanted to it, play it, in the it, NFL. It's, it's honorable work. Is honorable work, but guess what? That's not what he wanted to do. And players, you better not hit women because it's a totally no nonsense policy in the NFL. Now. First lady, please take us to break. <laughs> the first two listeners to email us or send a shout out why three ladies are grouped together will receive a $25 gift card from our partners at NFLshop.com and a 25 gift card from our new partners, Victoria's Secret. Now, your hit is they are the top. Well, I don't know why my name is not there, but anyway, stay tuned. Coming up next, we'll have a performance from On Planet Zoo on the first part of Shout Out. Where's my name, producers? <laughs> Obviously, somebody was faking the fuck in from around the globe to get a shout out from the panel. First lady, I can't wait to hear the music from On Planet Zoo. On Shout Out, we feature new independent artists who are looking to find their shining star. If we like what we hear, we'll give the track a shout out. If we don't like it, we hit the mute. Today, we have On Planet Zoo and their album, Adventurous of yo mama. I like to know what type of planet they're on. But anyway, DJ, <laughs> let's hear the song Speakers. Testing one, testing two, my check. One, 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 two, the snap, check, the bass drum, hum. It's where I'm from. 
for my trouble, and now you can track that. Speakers, speakers, I just your meters. The music so dope, I'm a spinner like speakers. So what you want now? Can you hear me now? I like my music drops. Turn it up or turn it down. You know you want this. You know you feel this. You just want this. Turn it up. Turn it up. It's time. 
time for flip it. Where our hosts defend the point and then flip the script and defend the opposing view, regardless of the team which veteran which veteran running back will have a better if they are both playing. All right, veterans Adrian Peterson or Marshawn Lynch. So regardless of which team these veterans land on, if they land on a team, okay, who is going to be the better? We ask to defend, the panel to defend AP all the way, baby. Now, you know, First Lady, I've looked at this situation with, with Adrian and with, with Marshawn chirping that he wanna go uh wanna go home to the to the Raiders. I am kinda like looking at Marshawn, what do you mean go home to the they going to Arizona? <laughs> yeah, I mean they're going to Nevada. That ain't home for you. You know, so that that's so that I am like, dude, it ain't no going home. And they talk about evicting them. They said, Look, we mad at y'all. Oakland might be so y'all might be playing in San Antonio come next season. So that ain't home for you. You know. That's called uh my son trying to make a money. My son looked and said, Well man, if I can get a few more little smackaroos, you know, hey, I don't believe I right, I'll go for it. But AP is the man. AP, for the last two years, has had to dealt with uh, 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 a season where he couldn't play because of, you know, things that happened. But he wasn't hurt. He just, you know, he was suspended. Then he did have a couple of nicks and stuff that kind of, you know, last year kept him from, you know, uh, being on the field the way he wanted. AP is hungry. AP wants to prove that he still got it and he wants to go out with a bag. He doesn't want to go out, you know, hey, injury here, injury there. He wants to have a a couple of really strong seasons so that he can go out saying that he was a top. NFL running back, and AP want to be on a team that that has a chance to go into the playoffs where he doesn't have the pressure of having to do everything. Now, Minnesota, uh, uh, I'd say that they would be, you know, getting that, that, that they, uh, you know, a couple of moves and they could be there, but he wants to get with a team that's got a, a already got a defense, already got a, a quarterback that's waking, and even if he doesn't get the right combination, AP is still, I say, physically got the hunger and will produce more. Marshawn, I'm looking at Marshawn, and I go, the beast is the beast. But he's got to have uh, uh, so many good components so that he can do his thing. Now, Oakland would be a good fit for him, but even if he went to Oakland, and AP goes to another team. We ain't talking about the Patriots. AP still has the elusiveness, the strength, and the fire. Well, he's going to end up doing better. First lady. AP all the way, baby. If I have to choose between AP and Beast Mode, it is AP all the way. I mean, Beast Mode he hasn't played in a year. Now, granted, AP hasn't played because of the injury. But the one thing about Beast Mode, he hasn't played because he retired. Then when he was in the last season when he was playing, he only played eight games. And he just hasn't been working out. So you know he's out of shape. The one thing about AP, he may have had injuries, but he's always working to return to the NFL. He he has that motivation and desire. I mean, beast mode, you know, he may act like a beast on the field, but you know how he is. He's not motivated. That's why he's such a big headache case to his his management. I mean, the teams, the coaches, he, he, he's just a big headache. He, he's not always motivated to play. He, he brings that baggage with him. And AP doesn't bring that baggage, you know, because he's always motivated. AP loves to play. Adrian Peterson. He is so determined. I mean, let's look at all the injuries he's had. He actually came back from each one of those. That's why he is, like I said, he has more determination than Marshawn Lynch. And when it comes down to actual the 
styles of the two players. AP is a running back that, hey, you need AP because he's an explosive running back. He's more explosive than Marshawn Lynch. I mean, AP puts a lot of pressure on the defenses. I mean, come on. He can break a tackle and score a touchdown. Like, boom. AP is gone. And if you got a passing game, a great passing game, and he can get a team that has a great quarterback, man, I mean, can you imagine AP on the Patriots? Please. We may not even play. They may not even play next season because they already can give the Super Bowl to the Patriots. <laughs> Come on. So that's the type of team that AP needs. Now, B. Small, you know, he's used for specific situations in the red zone. You know, he can get a touchdown with the five-yard line or something like that. But AP is definitely – a better all-around um, back than Marshawn Lynch. And just because Marshawn has those headache problems, too, I just don't think I would deal with Marshawn. AP is a better teammate, better team player. Hey, it's AP all the way, baby. All right. You heard the defense, but this is flipping where we flip the script and defend the opposing view. The Beast Alamo. <laughs> Now, uh, as much as I love some Adrian Peterson and uh, with his looseness and versatility, AP is not at the point where he can be the gr- pound and, and, you know, the grind, pound him down, ball control. It, uh, he's He's at that age where... Uh, he would need a team that he's not going to have to be relied on to pound, you know, to really do that pounding. Now that could be an advantage for AP because he, he's got the, the, he, he got skills. He is still a top running back, but Marshawn Lynch will fare better because any team he goes to, they know that they, they put him in for the pounding. They putting him in to move them chains. They putting him in to get that touchdown. And that is how Marshawn Lynch played. He a big, hard-headed <laughs> head case for his coaches. But give him that rock, that boy is going uh, – he only know one thing, and that's going forward. <laughs> he going to move them chains. And so many teams, it, it, it's not that, that that running back will get that break right through the hole and, and, and get that big chunk of yardage. It's that they can count on them to move them chains. And Marshawn Lynch is a, a, a chain-moving beast. And all they got to do is – now, one thing about Marshawn is, one, he was never – a off-season workout guy. And he's had a year where he hasn't had to pound and ground. Getting him back in shape ain't going to be that much. He ain't been away that long. He ain't ate that many Krispy Kreme donuts. <laughs> so <laughs> Marshawn Lynch will have a better season. First lady, defend. Well, you know, Marshawn Lynch hasn't played for a year, but – He's not injury prone, prone like Adrian Peterson. I mean, AP just had too many injuries. I mean, let's just go through all these injuries. Last year, torn meniscus. 2014, he had to clean up his sports hernia that he had in 2012. And then 2011, how could we forget? He had a torn ACL. That's just too many darn injuries that a person has to overcome. So now AP is good. Don't get me wrong. But Marshawn Lynch is more durable than Adrian Peterson. He is definitely more durable. And he, like you said, spit face, he does pile, plow those miles away with his, you know, running ability because he is a strength running back. He's not a, he's not a um, elusive. He's not a, uh, 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 one of those, um, you know, cutesy type of running back. No, he's just a power back. He's like, he'll mow you down, and he'll carry the whole defense on him when he starts running. But that's why he's the better choice because, like you said, if he can get a team that just has a running game, he can make those 
down every time. And that's what it's all about. It's about holding the ball and gaining the minutes. And then when you get in that red zone, then you need the beast mode because that's what he's going to do. He's going to get you a touchdown. And the thing about it, he can have a coach that will give him the football when they need a touchdown. <laughs> I like that coach. <laughs> Bringing up some bad memories oh, here. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, you know, he can get you a touchdown in the red zone. That's his specialty. That's what he's there for. He's there to get you red zone opportunities. How many red zone opportunities are you going to have? You're going to have more red zone opportunities than you're going to have waiting for a miracle breakout touchdown by AP. Man, it's beast mode every day, every time. I'll take it over AP. Get me that beast. All right, beast a la mode. First lady, take us to break. Stay tuned. Up next, the funnies and our favorite underwater friend on Flip It Part 2. Hey, what did they do with Dizzy? What did they do with Dizzy Mac? Did, did, did he get stopped at the at, at the border? Did they put in that Muslim van and they thought they, uh, they mistook his bare skin rug for... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> are still listening to bras, panties, and sports. It's time for the funnies Bit space. Over to you. All right, First Lady. Let's see what the production assistants have came up with. And First Lady, okay. <laughs> Chinese Zoo. Let's guess. Clean up polar bear poop. Hmm. I don't know if I'd be thrilled with that, but they they letting up. But but here's the thing, First Lady. For a hundred and forty five dollars. Are you serious? Hmm. Oh, I would clean tiny, up poop for $145. Uh, but, but this is polar bear poopy. <laughs> a tiny zoo is making some extra cash and promoting education by charging guests $145 for the privilege of cleaning up polar bear poop. The Wuhan Hai Chang Ocean Park in Yubai Province is offering a service once a week to adult guests interested in spending three hours experiencing the life of a polar bear keeper. The guests who must undergo health checks and attend a short training session prior to their shifts are given the opportunity to prepare food and feed the bears. But their main duties involve cleaning up the bears' duties. It really costs money to smell poop, but it's quite funny. Li Fing Fan, 26, a zoo guest who recently took the polar bear experience, it's hard to see polar bears, not to mention coming to close contact with them. Park spokesperson Chen King said the goal of the program is education. It's the first time the park has had a program targeting adults. It is a pilot to popularize science and knowledge of the animal for the public good, not for money. We actually don't want too many participants, as that would disturb the little polar bears. Hmm. <laughs> $145. I don't hey. know. God's dirty wise ratchet on you. It must be time for our favorite underwater friend. It's time for Flip It Part 2, where I host the Finn appointed and flip the script and defend the poison, uh, opposing view. The boys of spring have returned. Now, we have not started our hardball picks, but it is on the horizon. Will the Cubs repeat as baseball's world champions? The flying fickle finger of fate says, panel defend. The Cubs look like repeaters. Now, now, first lady, you know, uh, when I look at baseball, baseball is one of the hardest sports to repeat. But when you got uh, uh, the, the one of the things with baseball is you either making big deals, you know, to bring in people so you can compete, or you got the team that can compete, and now you're able to just 
make adjustments to keep your momentum going. And right now the Cubs are in that kind of situation where they got the team to compete. That's no question. Now they can make a deal or two, and they might have some. The, the, they might have some strong, um, uh, you know, person in their farm system that you know that they've been just kind of seasoning and you know getting them, you know, technique worked out that can sneak up in and be brought up, and, and everybody be going where they get him, and, and just add a little something to uh, uh, to beat them down. Now, uh, the beauty of the Cubs, they were built to be repeaters. They were bu- they done broke the curse. It's gone. Uh, it, it, it was barbecue goat all over, you know, Wrigleyville. It, you know, I, I, I see some repeating in their future. First lady, defend. Well, the Cubs have already been picked by the pundits uh, to be the repeating championship champions, so... I mean, everybody thinks that they can repeat. Like you said, it is difficult to repeat. Uh, but the the main reason why I think the Cubs will definitely repeat is the fact that they're still a young team, and most of their players are returning from the championship team. <laughs> so that's the number one reason. You know, they are all coming back. There's a few of them that departed, but, um, you know, they can deal with them, but their main superstar, Kyle Schwarber, is going to be healthy this season. If you remember, he didn't play the predominantly most of the last season. He came back in the playoffs, and he really helped them. So he's going to be back the entire season, and he should be healthier. And that's definitely going to assist them to pull away from the pack. Now, why not pick the Cubs? What really has changed in the National League for another team to get to the World Series? The Cubs are the best team in the National, National League. There's, there's nobody that really can compete with them. Maybe the Dodgers, maybe the Mets, but, I mean, if I have to bet on it, I'm going to bet with the Cubs. The Cubs were built to win for a long, long, long time. That's what Theo Epstein did when he put this team together. He put together a young core so that they could compete for years to come. And Chicago fans, you won't have to wait another 108 years to win another World Series because it's definitely going to be done this year. All right. You heard the defense, but you know this is flipping where we flip the script and defend the opposing views. All right, y'all, I grew up in Chicago, but this ain't basketball. Sorry, Cub fans. Maybe next year. <laughs> Now, you know, the, the Cubs, uh, the, the beauty of the Cubs is, like I said, they were built to last. And uh, they they were able to keep the, their team together uh, with just a few losses. And that's always key to being able to do it. But the thing about baseball is, is that uh, baseball is not dominated on on any team by one or two quote superstars who will like guarantee that you're gonna be uh, in uh, uh, you know in the championship. You know, unlike basketball, where if you got LeBron and two other people, you're gonna be there. If you got Steph Curry and uh, you know you're gonna be there. If you got, you know, it's certain teams, they always hovering around and always capable at any time to repeat, you know, at least capable to do it. Baseball is a challenging sport to do that because you never know if a team is going to get, uh, uh, is going to do an upgrade at pitching where that one or two upgrades in pitching can have a team go from mediocre to all of a sudden be competitive for world championships. Now, on the flip side for the Cubs, the the big thing for the Cubs is is that inevitably somebody get hurt. You know, we ain't talking about you know like in football where you know some get ripped up and everything, but somebody get hurt. It's a long season, 
and one or two players get hurt, uh, 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 a, a pitcher have a, a finger problem. You know, it ain't got to be big. Pitcher can just have a finger problem. That's it. You got to sit down for, for, for four or five games. Baseball is the hardest sport to repeat. You know, and, and you got a better chance uh, in in NFL. Uh, look at it, NFL. You Seattle Seahawks. They didn't win it, but they repeated. Got in there. Denver, darn near repeated. And, and we don't even talk about the Patriots. <laughs> don't happen that way in baseball. Baseball, you look up and you go, wait, there's a minute. Who playing? So, uh, Cub fans, uh, it just. Uh, the odds is just too hard in baseball to repeat. First lady, defend. Well, you know, Chicago's, you know, Chicago, people who live in Chicago, they're just so used to having their bulls repeat. They just assume that everybody can repeat <laughs> if they win a championship. But let's face it, Chicago, bears. They, don't, they don't have a uh, Michael Jordan on their team. Um, their Kyle, um, uh, what's his name? Kyle Schwarberger. He may be good, but he darn sure is not a Michael Jordan. And the thing about it, like you were saying, spit face, it's very hard to repeat in baseball. History is not on their side. The only time history was on their side is when they couldn't get a championship in 108 years. They finally did it, but history for repeating is not on their side. I mean, the last team to repeat for a baseball championship was the New York Yankees in 2000, year 2000. Matter of fact, they was going for a three-peat. So props to the Yankees because it's hard to repeat one time. They was on their three-peat. So they definitely had Michael Jordans on that team. They had a whole bunch of people. Their ace receiver, um, um, they, I'm having a memory last year, but anyway, let's just face it. They had some Michael Jordan on their team. Okay. <laughs> when, had, when you got to go back Peter. 17, when you got to go back 17 years, uh, we don't blame you for how that's, <laughs> that's you what I'm saying. That. I gotta go yeah, back you got to go back years. 17. That's a hell of you a long time. You have to go, man, somebody did repeat. <laughs> <laughs> that's a long time. So anyway, that's a long but, you know, time. It, 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 it's, it's about parity. Baseball has always been a sport about parity because everybody has a chance to win the championship. Now, there's a reason why I just believe the Cubs just can't repeat because, number one, their pitching rotation is suspect. You know, they had to get rid of O'Donnell's Chapman. O'Donnell's Chapman went back to the Yankees. That was their ace reliever. He's not with them this year. And John Lester is, um, is, is getting older. Jake Arrieta, he slipped up a little bit last year. And he's getting older. So their pitching is uh, definitely a question mark. But the one main reason why I just don't think the Cubs are going to repeat, because they're missing their emotional leader. Their emotional leader, Dexter Fowler, he left and went to the enemies. The St. Louis Cardinals. <laughs> and you remember when things were falling apart and they had during that rain delay, Dexter was the one that pulled the team together. And when they came out of that rain delay, that's when they just took off with the, um, took over. And so, I mean, that's, that's the emotional leader. He's no longer with the team. So I really think it's going to be a hard year for the Cubs. Now, they'll be in the playoffs, definitely in the playoffs, but they just have a lot of young guys there. And sometimes young guys can be immature, so sometimes you do, do need some veterans on your team and veterans that speak up. And um, Fowler is not there. And um, their other leader, he's dancing with the stars, so he retired. So it's going to be a rough year. They're not going to make it to the World Series. It's not going to be repeating. They will not be repeaters. All right, okay. And, and now, First Lady, before we get the Cubs hate mail and tweets, and uh, I just want to uh, uh, let them know, remember, I grew up in Chicago. <laughs> I am not by no stretch anti-Cubbies. No, I'm just but, telling but, it like so, it is. So I, so I just want y'all to know 
that y'all can send all the Twitter rants, rants, because we ain't got Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> we, ain't, you know, hey, you know, <laughs> we we ain't got Twitter. So hey, <laughs> first lady, take us to break. <laughs> On the other side of the break, we'll have a performance from On Planet Zoo on Shout Out. Please stay tuned. <laughs> what, what Get planet? on the Twitter account. <laughs> <laughs> What's that planet? <laughs> now, bras, panties, and sports. It has been a fun show this morning. If you missed the first three parts, ain't you glad this thing is recorded so that you can rewind and just listen to it as you want to? It's time for shout out part two, the picks and the finale. The music flows from around the globe to get a shout out from the voice lady and the crew. Over to you. We have another performance from On Planet Zoo with their album, adventurous of your mama. I wonder what that mama was doing. But anyway, DJ, let's hear Face America. Just to go up, tap, 
Thoughts on Planet Zoo with Base America. All right. Well, I'm going to start off with me. Um, I'm definitely going to give it the mute button again. I just think that this on Planet Zoo, you know what? I think they're trying to be like Buster Rhymes. You know, but but they don't quite got it like Buster Rhymes. That's what they they kind of <laughs> sound like him a little bit, but they don't quite have it there yet. So I mean, I'm not feeling them at all. So I'm going to give the song a mute button. Hit it real quickly. Fit face. <laughs> well, I, I, first lady. Uh, uh, now they did say that they kind of uh, strive to you know to be in that realm. So everybody got to start somewhere. So I'm gonna give them a yo, cause uh, I, 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 they ain't there yet. They really ain't there yet. But I'm gonna give them a yo for effort. But mm. uh, the other part is, is that I'm gonna go is, is that um, uh, I would recommend stop trying to emulate Buster Rhymes. <laughs> that just ain't gonna work. You are gonna just have to figure out what your thing is. And if you want to give a little shout out, riff or whatever they call it, you know, uh, for nostalgia, you know, <laughs> then go for it. But uh, you know, and then the other part is is that they, you know, I'm uh, you got to know your audience, your listeners, and like uh, 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 like a young man was being interviewed for the NFL draft, and they asked him, well, you know, how was it, you know, uh, that uh, uh, Snoop Dogg. Uh, was your uh, was your football coach? Because you know uh, Snoop Dogg actually volunteered. You know he had kids. You know and, and he was the little you know one of the little, one of the football coaches. You know and uh, and he, and you know uh, the the kid said, well you know you got to remember for me that was old people music. <laughs> 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 you know, and I was like, I was like, you know, I, I was looking around like, I, now since I go back to Roberta Flack, Donnie Hathaway, Bob and Gay, you know, mm-hmm. actually I go back further than that too. I, I don't know what they would say I was listening to then because if Snoop Dogg is old folk music, shoot, I, I you know, man, I, I, I'm ready to go wait in the world. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> I, 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 I'm feeling like I'm back in Pharaoh Day. You know, <laughs> you yeah. know can I get a staff? <laughs> you know, can we part a seat? But uh, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give y'all the yo for effort. <laughs> All right, You're giving them a you for effort. Well, I want to give it to you. Oh well, that's the end of shout out. If you like what you heard from on planted zoo check them out at on planet zoo.com and zoo is spelled z-u if you like what you if you like to be heard or have any comments you can send your emails and tracks to panties at old grumpy radio.com it is time for the picks It is time for the hardwood picks. I took the title last season. Can I have two crowns this year, the NFL and the hardwood? Well, after last week's result, it doesn't look like it. But again, like I'm going to tell you, it's very early in the game. So let's get to last week's picks. Well, we never got our results from CJ, so it's just Spitface and myself with the results. Well, Spitface, you had an excellent showing. You ended up with 440,000 points. I ended up with a negative 405,000 points. My goodness, I guess I didn't know too much about college basketball. So (laughs) we are currently... (laughs) I'm so glad college basketball is over, my goodness. <laughs> so, Fit Face, you are leading with 370,000 points. CJ is at 145,000 points. See, CJ didn't even play last week, and she's so ahead of me. <laughs> and I'm bringing up the rear with a minus 335,000 points. So I got a lot of work to do. 
So let's get to the current picks. Thank God it's just the NBA. Russell Westbrook will have two triple doubles this week. 150,000 for the correct answer, minus 155,000 for the incorrect answer. I, I personally, well, that's Russell Westbrook will not have two triple doubles. Oh, excuse doubles. me. Oh, I did read so it wrong. Either he will, will So play. either he will have one triple double or no triple doubles, or he'll have three or more triple doubles. So he will not have two triple doubles this week. Russell Westbrook will not have two triple doubles this week. All right, Spitface, I'll start with you. Yes. He will okay. have two tri- he will have two triple doubles this week. Just two. So you say mm, he will not. So you you so you say no. Correct. I'm Correct. saying he I say no. He you will say no, have right. just say two no. triple doubles, right? Well, you know what? I think he has four games left, three or four games. So I'm going to say no, and it's not that he's going to have two. I just think maybe he's going to only have one triple-double this week. So I'll say no. All right. Fit face. Well, then you want, I, I, well let, me, let me clarify that then. Then you say yes, he will not have two triple-doubles. He will either have... Uh, one or zero or three or more. Wait, it, it, it seems like these questions are getting more tricky and tricky for me. Last week I had problems, and this week I'm like, what's going on? Okay, Russell Westbrook will not have two triple doubles this week. Yes, you're right. I say yes. He will not have two because he's only going to have one, right? You so got my it. answer is. Yes, that, and that your be, answer was. Be, and your answer. What was your answer again? Your answer was that uh, my answer is is that he w- is. I'm a yes. You're a yes. So we both are yes for different reasons. <laughs> because I said he's only gonna have one, and you want to say he's only gonna have. He'll have two. Okay. Now that we clarified that, these questions are getting kind of hard and hard each week. Okay. Let's move on. By next show. Orlando will have more wins than the Knicks. 200,000 for the correct answer, minus 200,000 for the incorrect answer. Well, both of them are tanking, but I'm going to say no. Face <laughs> with your answer. Now, now is, that, is that a loyalty to the Knicks? <laughs> yes, yeah, loyalty. The, the less <laughs> or wins, le- or, or the you better said pick. Orlando is really, really that bad. <laughs> Well, I just happened to look at the schedule. The Knicks could win with the last game against the 76ers. I think they could beat the Sixers at home. So Orlando has a tough, tougher schedule, believe it or not. So that's why I'm going with no. Orlando will have more wins than the Knicks. Okay. You have no confidence in my Knicks. Okay. By the next show, Clippers will have more wins then the Utah Jazz, 150000 for the correct answer, minus 200000 for the incorrect answer. Spit face? Yes. I agree with you, yes. By the next show, Minnesota will have more wins than Dallas. 300000 for the correct answer, minus 250000 for the incorrect answer. I say yes, spit face? No. By the next show, Boston will have more wins than the Cleveland Cavaliers. 200,000 for the correct answer, minus 400,000 for the incorrect answer. Spit face? By the chinny chin chin, yes. All right, I got to make, I I initially said Boston would, but I want to switch it since you said yes, so I can have. I need to gain some more points. Okay. <laughs> I need to come make a comeback. All right. So it's time. <laughs> it's time for the panel to give their outrageous predictions. I think that was just one of my outrageous predictions to think that Boston will <laughs> do better than the Cavaliers. But anyway. All right. So Spitface, what's your outrageous prediction? Uh, my outrageous prediction is is that Jay Cutler goes to the Texans. Hmm. 
that may not be such an outrageous prediction. Well, my outrageous prediction will be that the Cleveland Browns, they're going to trade that number one pick. That's my outrageous prediction. Mm, that might not mm. be so outrageous. <laughs> may not be, but that's what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. it's, gold, it's gold in them draft picks. Yes. All right. So, you know, with President Trump so much in the news, you have his wife, Melania Trump, as the first lady. And, you know, she's the new first lady. I decided I need to hear a quote from my favorite first lady, and that's Michelle Obama. And Michelle Obama basically told young ladies this quote. I always tell young girls, surround yourself with goodness. I've learned early on how to get the haters out of my life, end quote. That's a Michelle Obama quote. Well, we will have a terrific poetic performance at the end of the show. This has been Cheryl Smith and Spitface. You have been listening to Bras, Panties, and Sports. Boy, do I miss Michelle Obama. Can I get to know you? Can we talk on the phone into the wee hours of the night? Can you share with me your deepest fears and allow me to quote scriptures to reassure you that everything is going to be all right? Can I take you on our first date, open up doors, pull our chairs, compliment you, give you kisses on your cheek and hand? Showing you how a woman should be treated courting you. Letting you know that it would be an honor to be your man. Can we show a first kiss on your doorstep under the stars and moonlit sky? Can I wrap these arms around you with my warm embrace and make you think to yourself, my, my, my? Can I show you how it would be if you were with me? Nothing but the best for my queen. You wouldn't want for a thing. People would subconsciously bow in our presence simply because my aura is that of a king. Can we read the Psalms of David to show you where I get my inspiration? Can I share with you my plans for changing the way of thinking for this generation? Can we fall asleep on my love seat, your head on my chest, listening to my heartbeat while I gently stroke your hair seven times because you make me feel so complete? Can I be that shoulder when you need someone to lean on, that thumb that wipes away all your tears, that smile that puts a smile on your face? The reason why when we're together, you wouldn't rather be any other place you see. Before the rapture, it is your heart that I want to capture. Can you inspire me with words of wisdom? Can you be a blessing to my poetic spirit so that I may write about you all day long? And can you not pay attention to the volume of my voice, but listen to the sincerity in my tone? Can I look deep into your eyes, gently caressing your hand and speak from the depths of my soul, words that are true? Can I make you see that for God to love me, that he blessed your mother with you? So exhale, close your eyes, open your heart, free your mind, and walk into your season with me. Now, last one last time. Can I, can you? Can we?